When people think of Afghanistan, they often think of two things, war and desert. What they don't realize is that during the 1970s, Afghanistan was a hotbed for tourism. And this is why. Around 100 kilometers northeast of Kabul is the famous Panjshir Valley, described by the Lonely Planet as possibly the most beautiful valley in Afghanistan. Panjshir literally translates as five lions, named after five spiritual protectors that local legend states ruled the valley in the 11th century. During the summer months, Afghan families flocked to the area to picnic beside the river. And having once been a favoured route for international tourists, I wanted to see for myself whether the valley was ready to again welcome foreigners. In the Panjshiri capital of Bazarak, the locals were happy to give their views on their home province. <laughs> Certainly the valley and the snow-peaked mountains that flank it are spectacular. The Panjshir River that runs through the valley, although too cold for swimming in the winter, still offers some fantastic picnic spots. But it wasn't just the scenery that I had come to see. Behind me is the tomb of Ahmed Shah Massoud, Afghanistan's most revered Mujahideen leader. For over 20 years, Massoud defended the Panjshir Valley, the gateway to northeastern Afghanistan, first against the Soviets and then against the Taliban. Massoud was assassinated on September the 9th, 2001, just two days before 9-11. But his legend lives on, not just in Panjshir, his birthplace, but across the nation where his image adorns street signs and shop windows, a symbol of Afghan resistance to oppression. A visit to his tomb where locals often come to reflect is a must for any visitor. Delicious. There is only one restaurant in Bazarak, and the menu consists solely of kebab, so not ideal for vegetarians. There is also only one hotel. The rooms, however, are comfortable, even if the electricity only comes on between 6 and 10 p.m. The following morning, we decided to continue through the valley to the base of the Hindu Kush, another 100 kilometers down the road, and I'm glad we did. The drive itself was worth the effort. Aside from the stunning vistas, the charming villages and the free wandering livestock we had to swerve to avoid, an army's worth of defunct artillery scatters the riverbed. Tanks, shells and even an old helicopter sit like scars, a testament to the valley's indomitable past. Yeah. All the way down the river there are plenty of things to stop off and see and some incredible feats of engineering. For instance, this bridge here is not something you'd want to cross every morning, but it's made from old parts of Soviet tanks. The drive, though long, was never dull, and by late morning we had reached our final destination. We've reached the base of the Hindu Kush, and it is absolutely beautiful. There are mountains for as far as the eye can see. The tops of them are covered in snow, and along down the valley is the Panjshir River. It's absolutely beautiful. It had been a unique experience, and one that dispelled the myth that all of Afghanistan is hostile to foreigners in both attitude and terrain. Only the most optimistic foresee a near future where tourists flock here, but with a carefully planned itinerary and trusted local help, parts of Afghanistan, such as the Panjshir Valley, offer a visual and visceral imprint unmatched anywhere else in the world. This is Jake Tupman reporting from Panjshir for the NATO Channel.